The cosmic wonderland above our heads is filled with celestial bodies of all ages and shapes, but we could never unveil its true mysteries until now. The James Webb Space Telescope, being a cosmic time machine, has just discovered 33 teenage galaxies on the edge of our universe. On 20th of November 2023, NASA revealed its astonishing findings of the unexpectedly young galaxies, the presence of heavy metals on them, and the process of star formation. The James Webb Space Telescope is the most powerful spyglass of our age. Its main goal is to study the unseen infancy period of the universe, which we haven't visualized yet. From the time of its first operation in 2021 till date, JWST has observed numerous distant galaxies, planet features, comets, and whatnot. The James Webb Space Telescope was conceived and designed to help us understand the origin of galaxies. So we shouldn't be surprised that it's forcing us to scratch our head. Webb Telescope can see celestial objects in infrared light, the light that is beyond the red end of the visible spectrum. The latest Webb data has provided us with a view of galaxies that are billions of light years away from us. As JWST is far back in time, it has captured tremendous galaxies in their teenage years. Webb has discovered 33 baby galaxies, According to initial observation, these galaxies are quite young compared to other galaxies we are already aware of, but that's not the only groundbreaking revelation about them. These teenage galaxies contain heavy elements that are rare to be found on celestial bodies that lie on light years of distance from Earth. The existence of these elements is weird because of the high temperature. Furthermore, their existence requires multiple life cycles of stars, which means that these galaxies are much older. So what is the exact age of these galaxies? How far do these galaxies lie? Are they older than Big Bang? And what caused the existence of heavy metals on these Enage galaxies? Fortunately, electromagnetic radiation is a treasure of information. By taking a deep look at the redshift of these galaxies, we can figure out how far they reside from our planet. This data from Redshift provided us a view of galaxies that are billions of light years away from us, and JWST captured them in their teenage years. Fortunately, electromagnetic radiation is like a treasure of information. We figure out how far a galaxy is by looking at its Redshift. Redshift is like a cosmic fingerprint. It tells us how much a galaxy's light has shifted to the red side because the universe is expanding across vast distances. To calculate the distance between us and other galaxies, we also use some special properties of the universe, like the Hubble constant, which tells us how fast the universe is growing and how much stuff is in it. Now let's talk about the formation of such distant galaxies, the big picture in which all the cosmic objects are framed the Big Bang. The most renowned cosmological theory suggests that the universe began 13.7 billion years ago as a result of an explosion. Stars ignited and galaxies slowly formed by this explosion. But how galaxies are born and evolved throughout cosmic time? The universe itself functions as a sort of time machine, enabling us to witness distant galaxies as they existed in the distant past. For nearby galaxies like Andromeda, the time it takes for their light to reach us spans a few hundred thousand to several million years. Changes that take place in such a short period of time are typically minimal, as individual stars may be born or die, but the galaxy's overall structure and appearance persist. However, our observations extend to galaxies so distant that we perceive them as they were more than 13 billion years ago, when their light commenced its journey and these are difficult to observe. The universe has expanded from a very dense and incredibly hot state. If we catch the light from an object that left it six billion years ago, we're basically looking at the object when the universe was nearly eight billion years old. And if we spot something whose light started its journey 13 billion years ago, we're peeping into the universe when it was just a baby less than a billion years old, 
but a bit larger than the size at its birth. But when the James Webb Space Telescope captured these galaxies, it contradicted the Big Bang hypothesis of universal expansion, as these galaxies appeared to be too small, old, and smooth. But why? Big Bang theorists thought that objects like galaxies in space should appear larger with the expansion of the universe, but these are captured in incredibly small size and many such distinctions, which are surprising for Big Bang theorists. The Big Bang theory suggested that these galaxies should exhibit irregularity, but JWST images showed these galaxies are smooth. As the universe expanded and cooled down, transformations took place Particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons began to interact with light and energy in their surroundings. These interactions played a pivotal role in shaping the formation of matter in the universe during the first few minutes after the Big Bang. There was a process called nucleosynthesis. This process involved the creation of lightweight elements like hydrogen and helium. The extreme temperatures and conditions during this phase allowed for the fusion of protons and neutrons. This causes the formation of simple atomic building blocks, hydrogen. The simplest and most abundant element in the universe was formed primarily during this early period. Helium, the second most abundant element, also emerged during this time. All these are observed in galaxies that are formed way after the Big Bang and are recently captured in their teenage. But a recent study published on 20, November 2023, revealed some secrets of these teenage galaxies, which are unbelievable. Astronomers observed the galaxy's redshift in its spectrum. They measured the distance using the speed of light as their trusty guide. So. They can tell us exactly how far back in time they're seeing these galaxies. Similarly, a group of scientists from Northwestern University used NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to check out the chemistry of faraway galaxies. Strom and Rudy led the overall project known as Cecilia, also known as Chemical Evolution Constrained, using ionized lines in the Interstellar Aurorae Survey. The name also paid tribute to Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin, one of the earliest women to earn a PhD in astronomy. But it's also an homage to Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin. Cecilia was the first astronomer to determine that the sun's chemistry was different from the Earth's, and that sun, the sun and stars like it were mostly made out of hydrogen and helium. This study focused on how JWST can give us new and detailed measurements of lines spectrum from these distant galaxies, labeled as teenage galaxies. On the basis of their developmental stage when these galaxies emitted the light and became visible to us, they weren't exactly young, not in their infancy, but were experiencing a significant growth spurt, actively forming numerous stars. The study explained the program design of JWST, including how long the exposures need to be and the setup of the multi-object spectrograph. The study involved taking really deep observations of star-forming galaxies at certain redshifts, and they processed the data using a pipeline called JBOAST. The early findings reveal that teenage galaxies, born two to three billion years after the Big Bang, are surprisingly hot and have unexpected elements like nickel, making them tricky to observe Carnegie astronomer Alison Strom talked about the chemistry of these galaxies. Knowing the chemistry of young galaxies is gonna give us amazing new insights into the early years of our universe. Because all elements heavier than hydrogen and helium in the periodic table are produced during the lives and deaths of stars. The Cecilia survey examined the line spectrum of distant galaxies by studying a galaxy's chemical DNA. This helped researchers understand the growth and future evolution of galaxies, especially during their teenage years when significant development occurs. The spectrum revealed elements like oxygen and sulfur provided insights into a galaxy's past and future activities. This exploration can help astrophysicists unravel mysteries like why some galaxies are red and dead, while others, like the Milky Way, 
are still forming stars. Studying these crucial teenage years sheds light on the unique features of galaxies and the underlying physics that shape them. And when you get a spectrum of a galaxy, it's like the fingerprint of all of the chemistry that's going on in there and also well, chemical elements that are going on in there, as well as where we would put it in the expansion model of the universe. Strom and her collaborators used the JWST to observe 33 distant teenage galaxies for a continuous time of 30 hours in the past summer. They combined light from 23 faraway galaxies and then marked them with red rectangles in the space telescope image. They detected very faint emissions from eight different elements. While these elements are commonly found on Earth, the ultra-deep spectrum uncovered eight specific elements. Hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, sulfur, argon, and nickel. Stars created all elements, heavier than hydrogen and helium. These elements weren't around when the universe started. Stars had to make them inside themselves. So, when the light from these galaxies first shine, a whole bunch of stars had already been born, lived, and died. They exploded in supernovas, spreading out the new elements they made. This happened even before the universe turned a billion years old. Therefore, the existence of specific elements gives insights into star formation across a galaxy's evolution. Or, these elements are signals of multiple supernovae, which force us to believe that these galaxies are much older than Big Bang. And it's not just a couple of stars in each galaxy doing this. Enough stars had to go through this process to actually change the mix of stuff in the entire galaxy. We can still see and measure this change in the faraway galaxy's light spectrum. Oxygen is the third most common element in the whole universe after hydrogen and helium. Oxygen is crucial for understanding a galaxy's history, like its growth over time. It's like the DNA of a galaxy. Nickel was unexpected. It was thought that there might be a bit, but usually it doesn't shine brightly, even in nearby galaxies. So spotting it was a surprise. It could mean there's something unique about the big stars making the gas glow, added Strom. Astrophysicists were astonished to discover nickel, a rare and challenging to observe element during their study. Nickel, heavier than iron, is seldom seen, even in nearby galaxies. Anyone can ever imagine the observation of nickel. It's not commonly observed in nearby galaxies due to the specific conditions required for visibility. Elements must glow in gas for us to see them, and the presence of nickel suggests unique characteristics in the stars within these galaxies. Surprisingly, teenage galaxies are super hot. Physicists figured this out by looking at the spectra, and these young galaxies are hotter than the hottest places in regular galaxies. They go beyond 13,350 degrees Celsius, 24,062 degrees Fahrenheit. Strom said that this is proof that galaxies were way different when they were young. The high temperature shows their unique chemical makeup as the temperature and chemistry of gas in galaxies are connected. Nickel that lights up in gas shows that stars and their nurseries in these teenage galaxies are super hot. Even though they have fewer stars than the Milky Way, they have more really hot stars. We lack a clear understanding of what makes galaxies develop differently. While we grasp the general concept, the specific physics behind these variations is challenging to comprehend. So, Strom explained that the discoveries suggest a scenario where these galaxies are still in, a chemically immature state and are developing rapidly. At the end, we are surprised and curious because this research is the first in a planet series of seven or eight. The next one will look at the light spectra emitted by one single distant galaxy. So stay tuned, we will be back with the next one.